CM365 all about Carnatic music. We all know that Sri Muthuswami Dikshadar has given us a treasure of some very great compositions which are about 479 in number. That is the ones available to us are about 479 Kritis. And uh, today I thought I will share some interesting statistical details about these uh, Kritis. Basically in the Sangeeta Sampradaya Pradeshni of Subrahma Dikshadar, we find that there is mention only of about 217 Kritis. But nevertheless, in all the publications that we have, we see that we have an available 479 Kritis. And uh, coming to some interesting facts about these Kritis. In this, uh, as we all know, Dikshadar is uh, one of the earliest composers actually to have composed in all the 72 Melakartas. That is, he followed the Asampurna Mela Paddhati, but nevertheless, we have compositions of Dikshadar available in 72, that is, all the 72 Melas. And uh, among the total compositions that I mentioned to you, in the Suddha Madhyama Melas, that is, uh, the Janaka and Janyaragas belonging to the Suddha Madhyama category, we have 423 compositions and in the Pratimadhyama category, we have about 56 compositions that is in the Shuddha Madhyama Melam and the Pratimadhyama Melam. In total, Dikshadar has employed about 193 ragas for composing his Kritis. And uh, among the trinity, we see that he is the only one who has composed Ragamalikas and uh, though we are only aware of the very popular Chatur Dasha Ragamalika that he composed, actually he has composed four Ragamalikas. Then coming to the Upanga Ragas in which he has composed, they are 102 in number. Then in the Bashanga category, that is in the among the Bashanga Ragas that he has used are 179. And in the others category, we have 198. We know that uh, he is uh, one composer who adopted two formats of the Kriti for composition. That is, unlike Tyagarajar who had many formats, he used basically the Pallavi Anupallavi Charana format 1. And uh, the second thing that he used was the Pallavi and the Samashti Charana. That is, Pallavi followed by another only one section. Of course, uh, in the uh, Sangeeta Sampradaya Pratrishni, we do not see the use of this terminology Samashti Charanam, but later on the two part kind of composition that Dikshadar has composed, the second part has come to be known popularly as the Samashti Charanam. So as I mentioned earlier, in the Pallavi Anupallavi Charanam format, he has created 280 compositions and in the Pallavi and Samashti Charana format, he has composed 157 compositions. Of course, we also have one uh, class of compositions which are unique in nature, that is something which has been composed only by Dikshadar, which are the Notu Swara Sahityas. Now, the Notu Swara Sahityas are a very interesting group of compositions which are based on the Shankarabarna, not Shankarabarnam Ragam as such, that is Shankarabarnam scale, which means that all the compositions are devoid of the typical gamakas which goes to make the Shankarabarnam ragam. And the Shankarabarnam in its uh, plain scalar mode has been adopted by Dikshadar to compose this unique set of note swara sahityam. And of course, in this note swara sahityam, we also see that uh, he has uh, covered a wide gamut of gods and goddesses. Of course, through the other compositions also, we see that he has created uh, compositions on almost every god that is possible. But here again also we see that within these small compositions which are probably only about of two lines, he has created compositions on Vinayaka, Vishnu, Rama, Hanuma, Devi and so on. Now coming to the ragas, I mentioned that he has used 193 ragas. And in this we see that in 97 ragams, there are only one kriti of his. In 44 ragams, he has composed two kritis each. In 14 other ragams, he has composed three compositions each. 
Then in uh, 15 other ragams, we see that he has composed four compositions each. Then there are eight ragas in which he has composed four kritis each. Then there are six ragas in which he has composed 16 kritis each. And uh, three ragas where he has composed seven uh, kritis each, like for example, uh, in the ragas Ananda Bhairavi, Bhairavi and Shuruti, we see that he has composed seven kritis each. Then in the four ragas, Athana, Arabi, Kambodhi and Todi, each of these ragams he has composed eight kritis. Then in the ragam Kalyani, we see that he has composed many compositions, that is about 11 kritis are available in Kalyani. And of course, to top it all, we have the Shankarabarnam, where he has composed about 48 kritis. And uh, 48 kritis, of course, it includes also the notice for us. If we take them as Shankarabarnam, then this uh, calculation comes correct. As I said, the maximum compositions he has composed is in the Shankarabarnam and its scale as well. And even under the, if you look at the Melam under which he has composed maximum number of compositions, it is again Shankarabarnam where he has composed 96 compositions. Coming to the major Mela Ragams in which he has composed Kritis, in Todi, Dikshadar has composed 13 compositions. In Maya Malagola, there are much more, and uh, Natabhairavi, Shri, Harikedaragola, Dhira Shankarabarnam, Shanta Kalyani. So, these are all the ragas in which you see that the Mela Raga as well as its Janyas, there are maximum number of compositions. Coming to the Talas that he has used in his uh, compositions, the Adi Tala takes the important share, I would say, where there are 190 compositions in Adi Tala. In Rukam, Rupakam, we have 139 compositions. Of course, he has actually composed many compositions in Rupakatalam also. Then in Triputa Talam, we have 17 compositions. In Jampa Talam, actually he has composed 15. In Mishra Chapu, 54 compositions. In Khanda Chapu, there are 6 compositions. And apart from this, he is also composed in Matya Talam, then uh, Tishra, Chatushra, Khanda Ekam and so on. Of course, the Navagraha Kritis are a classic example where we see that the Sapta Talas, right from the Dhruva, Matya, Atta, Jhampa, like this, all the seven Talas have been incorporated by him for the first seven songs of this Navagraha Kritis. Coming to the language in which he composed, of course, we all know that he was a prolific in Sanskrit, a great uh, Sanskrit Pandit that he was. Uh, he has composed most of his compositions only in Sanskrit, which happens to be about 475. Then there is only one particular composition in Telugu and he has also composed three Manipravala Kritis. Manipravala means an amalgamation of two or more languages. So the Manipravala that Dikshadar has used consists of Sanskrit, Telugu and Tamil and there are three compositions of this kind. Coming to the Vagekara Mudra. We see that uh, very deftly he has used the Vagekara Mudra in all his compositions and uh, what is important is that he does not thrust the uh, Vagekara Mudra in, rather he puts it at appropriate places. Why I am saying this is that in the case of Tyagaraja, we see that in every composition of his, it is only the last line of the Charanam that the Tyagaraja Mudra comes in. But Dikshadar's composition, you would see that the Mudra Guru Guha would come anywhere in the composition. And why is it so? Because of the fact that he does not thrust the name Guru Guha into the composition but use it, uses it very appropriately where the meaning also comes for that. That is along with the meaning the Guru Guha mudra comes in and but at the same time if you read that particular line or sentence the word Guru Guha conveys some other meaning as well. Only in the Telugu Kriti which is supposed to have been composed by him we see that his mudra is not there. Of course, the deities, the gamut of deities that he has covered is absolutely amazing and mind-boggling. He has covered Shiva, Devi under various forms you can see and uh, Saraswati, Vishnu, Rama, Krishna, Ganapati, Subramanya, Navagraha, Brahma, Shasta, then the Sandhya Devi, Ganga and even Maya for that matter. 
he has uh, composed one composition mayetu amyahi uh, and that in the ragam tarangini so that is also a very unique composition that he has done of course among the group kritis that he has composed nobody can surpass him because of the fact that the group kritis are not just about bringing together a group of compositions to form one group but there is also a logical sequence and he has tried to convey so many details through each of the compositions in that group kritis as well some of the classical uh, or rather the one of the best um, group kritis that he has composed some of them are like kamalamba navavarnam abhayamba vibhakti kirtana Nilotpalamba Kirtana, Tyagaraja Vibhakti Kirtana, Guru Guha Vibhakti Kirtana, then the Madhuramba Vibhakti Kirtana, then Shodasha Ganapati Kirtanas, Rama Vibhakti Kirtana, and of course the unique set of note swaras which I mentioned earlier also that he has composed. Thus we see that when we study the compositions, compositions of Dikshadar, we are able to analyze so many aspects in the sense that he has covered such a wide variety, such a wide gamut in terms of the Mela Ragas he has used, the Janya Ragas he has used, in terms of the Talas that he has used, in terms of the language and so many other aspects. And that is why I suppose once again I would uh, reiterate the point that he is one of the greatest composer for all times. CM 365 all about Carnatic music.